me everybody I just wanted to do a quick uh, video on the anatomy of ball bearings um, in this particular video I want to address uh, mostly the skate bearings that people use um, which are would be one of these these are the uh, 608 8 millimeter bearings um, or the um, 7 millimeter bearings um, I just wanted to go over a few uh, key parts of it to maybe help people get a better understanding of how these work. Um, I've got a large bearing over here and I wanted to use this just uh, as an example um, to point out a few things but I want to point out a couple uh, pieces of anatomy of this bearing and this is a standard uh, ball bearing this actually is probably came out of uh, some type of rotary unit perhaps like a fan or something um, but you'll notice a few key parts one there's this outer ring here so that is called well the outer ring um, and then we have the inner ring here the inner ring spin spins but so does the outer ring depending on where the load is um, there's a capability for a radial load and an axial load um, the amount of balls in the bearing um, that's really at the discrepancy of the manufacturer. Um, the bearing itself is made of uh, carbon steel. Specifically, most of these bearings are made of 52100 steel. Um, that is a chrome alloy steel, and it is similar to 1095 steel. For those of you that are familiar, uh, that keep up with uh, knife manufacturers, 1095 carbon steel is a very good knife steel. Um, 52100 is very very similar the only difference is it has a little bit more chromium in it and therefore makes it a little bit more corrosion resistant um, so the inner and outer ring are both made of 52100 as are the uh, balls the exception being if the balls are ceramic or um, a nitrided uh, ball there is I think there's a zirconium nitride um, in those cases, the, that's a non-metal component, but um, anyways. Um, the retaining mechanism here that's holding these balls in uh, place and spacing them out is called the cage uh, or retainer. Cages can be made of a bunch of different materials. Typically, you see metal cages, in this case, this one. Um, on precision skate bearings, you typically see um, thermoplastic retainers. So in this one, the, this is a uh, this is a bones bearing. I don't know officially what bones uses. My understanding is it varies from the different uh, models they have. But typically, in this visually looking at it, this looks like nylon. Um, usually, the material is either nylon. Uh, Delrin, which is another type of thermoplastic, or Teflon. Um, occasionally, you will also see fiberglass reinforced um, nylon. Um, this, uh, the one on the uh, left here, the metallic one, is called a ribbon bearing. Uh, it kind of resembles a ribbon when you look at it. It's actually a dual, it's two parts that are stamped together. And you can see the little studs there and they go around the balls and retain them. Um, they're sturdier. The drawback is it's steel on steel. You have more friction and there's more noise. Noise equals harmonics. Harmonics can be a problem. So for low speed bearings, steel ribbon bearings would, are more than fine. And it's also a way to cut costs. Um, nylon or Delrin, Teflon, whatever, these um, uh, thermoplastic bearings, um, generally speaking, are a little bit more precision oriented. They they handle heat well. Um, usually, nylon's good to up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or greater. And for those people skating, you're not going to encounter that temperature. Um, they pretty much are very low noise, if little to no noise. Um, and they have a very low friction coefficient so you'll encounter less friction with the synthetic material rubbing against the steel balls versus the steel on steel 
Um, and, oh, another thing I wanted to point out, this right here is a different type of bearing, but you'll notice that this is the ring, and you'll see this groove that's in it that runs the gamut here, and this is the ball. So the ball actually rotates in that groove. That's called the race, and there's two races. There's an inner race, which is on the inside of this ring, and an outer race, which is on the inside of the outer uh, ring. And they're corresponding, so the, the balls are actually riding in these two different races. Um, it's machined, it's very smooth, um, and because the, uh, in this case, the steel on steel bearings, they have the same hardness, um, they don't burnish each other. Um, a few other things I wanted to point out. You'll notice that this bearing here, this skate bearing, has this black plastic over it. That's called a that's called a excuse me, a shield. Um, the shields are removable. Some bearings are uh, metal shield, metal sealed shields. Um, I think they're Z types. Um, these are not. I like these ones better because they are user serviceable. Um, in order to get these off, I recommend a pick, and I can't do this with one hand, but you'll take a pick and put it in the in-between there and you can just pop it right up. Um, this is pretty essential for cleaning these out, doing a deeper clean, and um, then to push it back on, you literally just push it and it'll set into a groove in there. Um, these are some quick bearings over here, quick zenith bearings. Um, this is a good view of the the retainer in there, and this type of kit retainer is actually called a crown type retainer. Um, the reason for that is that when you look at it with all the balls out, it sort of resembles a crown. Um, but other than that, that's uh, most of the basics of a, a bearing. Realistically, we uh, we could explore a lot of fundamentals of bearings, the physics in it, um, types of materials, and go on for quite a long time, but I just wanted to make a pretty short video of uh, what you're looking at when you pull apart your skates or your skateboard uh, wheels and things like that. All right, hope this helps somebody. Thanks.